This is your daily briefing and your most welcome to it as ever. I am one of life's overthinkers, which is a burden more than it is a blessing, I have to tell you. Um, never tell me a casual fib, it will come out in the wash. But I've been pondering this mess we're in with the supporters trust, the, 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 the board of the football club, the Enoch Out Brigade with their bed sheets, absolute fiasco, but I think I've cracked it. And I'll share that with you after we've spun through the football stuff. Hoybier talking like a captain. It was important to get back on the right keel after conceding nine goals in three games. It was absolutely unacceptable, especially when you only score one goal yourself. It was not fun to be a part of. Even when we won three matches, we were well aware that we did not do things perfectly and still in a process. Now, we luckily got a victory over Aston Villa. So overall, it looks okay after seven games. We are four points behind first. So if we stick to it now, it may well be okay. I mean, this, this guy, he just gets better and better. He talks like a man, he acts like a man. Um, and you know, you have that song, you know, dream of a team full of Robbie Keynes. I would love to have 11 Pierre Hoybergs uh, playing for Tottenham. He's the absolute business. No weak spots whatsoever. And if you don't enjoy watching him play, he's not 100% every game, nobody ever is. But if you, you have questions about the way he plays, then that's your problem, not his. Um, Paul Merson says Newcastle United should avoid doing a Spurs and instead spend on ready-made players after their takeover. Buying 10 million and 12 million players doesn't win anything these days. Just ask Tottenham, it just doesn't work. Wise words from the old vegetable. Um, Barcelona have allegedly identified Tottenham Hotspur's Tongi Dombele as a transfer target for January. Can't see it, can't see it. They've got no money for one, and two, who in their right mind is going to pay 200 odd 100,000 a week for him? Um, Charlie Eccleshares let himself down here with the Athletic. Tottenham will try and sign an attacking player in January. <sighs> I'd give up. Um, Argentina manager Lionel Scaloni on Lo Celso and Romero. They're about to play. They're about to play all three games, and under no circumstances will they leave earlier. Um, put up um, a couple of videos this morning of uh, Lo Celso's involvement in the two Argentina goals last night. Please don't uh, be misled. Wasn't a great game for the boy. They were technically almost assists. I'd say kind of shot assists, if anything. Um, wasn't a great game. Um, and I'm sure some people will be misrepresenting his actions last night to you. Don't get excited. I watched a fair chunk of the game, by the way. It's not all about the numbers. Um, here's a good fairy tale for you. Fabio Paratici is in direct talks with Dusan Vlahovic's entourage, where an economic agreement has probably been found. That comes from Calcio Mercato, Italy. Uh, just for a bit of context here, before you start whooping and hollering over what I would describe as a better than awful tap-in merchant, Fiorentina have slapped 77 million price tag, that's sterling, GBP, um, on Spurs and Arsenal target Dusan Vlahovic after he rejected a 35 million offer. Um, for a new contract with Juventus, Tottenham and Manchester City also interested in star striker. I don't think Manchester City would touch this guy with a barge pole. Um, OK, so I'm a huge build up. I've wasted four minutes of your life. But the, the crux of this redevelopment, and this is onto the Enoch and the, the bed sheets and the trust and the board. It's obviously totally chaotic now. People not talking to each other. Um, the crux of this, the, the, the myth, sorry, but until it's proven, it's a myth, you know. Um, was that we were going to demolish White Hart Lane, build this brave new world, this spaceship, this, this shopping centre deluxe, the sulphur harvesting device, and have all these other activities there. It was going to be open 24-7, NFL, Guns N' Roses, Shirley Bassey, you know, with, you know, all this business. And the idea was that the club could then finance the football in a sustainable manner. What a horrible word sustainable is, especially when used in football by people who have no grasp of economics. Um, 
and the debate about what's sustainable and isn't uh, is and isn't um, um, so what I'm suggesting is in the interest of fairness and tra in transparency the club should be asked one simple question and I think I've, I've got it when you've paid all this off okay so we're we're familiar with um, the, the story the fact that we're on this journey all these horrible buzzwords that I'm deliberately using we're on this we're on this journey of a mortgage to pay off the debt and one would expect that are they going to plow every penny into that because it's very low interest or are they going to direct some off and but what i want to know what you should want to know is what is going to be the percentage now don't don't roll your eyes and start weaving excuses because that simply isn't good enough this guy has got a degree in economics and land management, okay? We're not dealing with some schmohawk here. Levy will know to, for every beverage he sells what his cut is. This is the guy who invoices people if they walk off after leaving the, uh, the, the director's lounge with a plastic uh, fork. He knows the price of everything. And of course, perhaps in some instances, not the value of everything. But what we want to know is for every dollar that comes in every euro every ruble every pound shilling and pence every coin that comes in on the back of a guns and roses gig or an nfl gig or a whatever it might be how much of that proportionately is going to go into the football now there is a magic number i don't know what it is but they will be able to tell you because that's how big businesses work they don't take a stab at it, they know. So, and, and, and the point I'm getting to here is A, I'd like transparency as soon as possible, but I'm pretty sure when that number comes out, and let's say for argument's sake, for every pound or whatever is spent, um, that after all the deductions and this, that and the other, you're left with, that can be put towards the football, is 12 pence. I don't know, I'm just pulling that out of the air. But say it's 12 pence, you could then, rationally work out against a forecast across the year with a certain amount of events if you're aiming to do oh, again <clears throat> excuse me just another number out there five million um quids or 50 million quids worth of events if you knew you were getting 12 percent of it then surely that would be a guide and i bet you that if that question had been asked when we were faced with all of this nonsense at the very beginning there would have been enough um movement enough protest enough uncomfortableness across the fan base for this thing to have never happened and they wouldn't have been allowed to demolish white heart lane you saw the kerfuffle that the european super league um, caused and i've told you my thoughts on that i don't think it's a straightforward boo hiss nasty guy away thing i think it needs to have more rational questions uh, poised towards it but the business of the, the stadium thing, they, he will know, he will know every time he sells a, a, a little plate of nachos, every time he sells a, a, one of those pints that fills up from the bottom, he will know the margin on, on that particular item. And, as, and giving us the big number off of his uh, sp spreadsheet, for us, for a better word, he will know after the boxing that they had, in theory, 12% or 8% would have gone to the football had there been no debt. So I would expect the number initially, say if I've guessed at 12%, um, that uh, because you've got to service the debt, that might come down to 3% or something of that. I don't know. I, this is all, you get what I'm at here. But this is what the trust or members of the public, supporters, whatever you want to call them, this is the question that they need to ask Enoch and Enoch Board and um, uh, Diana, Diana Cullen. We need to know what's the cut whilst the debt is being serviced that would have gone to the football, is scheduled to go to the football, and then we want to know what the overall cut would be when the debt is gone. Because that way, we've got an idea of whether all of this pain and misery is worth it. It's slightly academic now, because we've demolished White Hart Lane. So we can't just turn around and say, ah, oh, no, 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 that's tiny, that's not worth it. If you were going to put more in, then, you know, we'll give you a green light. But I would love that question to be asked, and nobody's thought of asking it. Right, that's your lot for today. Um, 
the international football isn't really producing very much and FIFA and other people are just blocking every single bloody video worldwide. So if you want to watch it, um, illegal streams. There you go. I've said a naughty thing. Illegal streams. Um, don't give them a penny. And, um, you know, good luck. Keep it on them.